everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'll be joined by Brooke Burke, the author, host, and entrepreneur, joins us to discuss her summer slim down secrets. I need those, including moves from her body burn workout and tips from her fitness lifestyle app, Brooke Burke Body. But before we welcome Brooke, let's play a clip. Hey everyone, welcome to my 28 day summer slim down. I am so glad you're here and we are gonna get into the best shape of our life and we're gonna do it together. Guys, give it up for Brooke Burke. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I feel like I have so much to learn from you today. Oh, good. I'm ready. I mean, so much inspiration. But I want to talk a little bit more about like your fitness background because you've really turned into this fitness expert. But what did you do growing up? Did you play sports? Like, how? When did you kind of find fitness? You know what? I my my father had no son, so I was sort of his little Charlie. I was definitely a tomboy. I played a lot of sports. Yes, I had a little bit of interest in some kind of more fitness bodybuilding when I was in high school, but it wasn't really that. This sort of happened by, um, you know, by chance. I was choreographing a series with Sony, doing some DVDs, and instead of bringing in professional fitness experts, I wanted to bring in a real group of women and figure out what worked on um, a real, you know, a real woman's body and see how far I could push them and what kind of transformation uh, we could get. And after I finished the series, they were like, hey, can we keep doing this? And I never thought I would be an instructor or start a class. And I never knew how much I would get out of giving in that space. And I said, sure. So I started teaching a class just for fun. It's really an act of service, kind of a passion project. It's been five years now. I can't believe it. I love it. And that sort of segued into developing the app and creating out workouts that people can do at home because not everybody's going to get to Malibu and be able to join me in my class. But it's something that I wanted to share with everyone. So, um, you know, it was a strange road there, but I, but I love it. <laughs> and who are some of your fitness uh, inspirations? I know I grew up doing the Jody Watley dance. Oh, you did? did? Yeah, I don't know if you guys you remember that. dance a little bit, right? Like bring some rhythm into it. So who it. are some of the people who um, sort of inspired you and maybe kind of informed the sort of fitness that you Well, I you, look at somebody you know. like Jane. Fonda, who's sort of a guru and just timeless, and I love her with her zest for life and at her age just doing it and doing it and doing it. Um, but so many different people, and I and I think it's really about um, you know figuring out what works for your body and what you can enjoy and how to change your relationship with fitness so that you can approach it and make it fun. I've done a little bit of everything. I've worked with so many trainers. Um, I figured it out in the gym, outside of the gym. I've taken a variety of classes. I really believe in cross training. I don't feel like anybody is reinventing fitness. You know, we're sort of cut and pasting and recreating it. But what I do know is now in my 40s and after having four children, I figured out how to do it effectively in a less amount of time, which, you know, that's what we're all complaining about as women and mothers and, and business people. We all have a big life. There's so many reasons not to work out. So if you take the time element out of it and you take the economic component out of it, you know, being able to work out on apps at home, it's really, really affordable and and doable, so. Yeah, technology has changed the yeah. game completely. <laughs> like, I sometimes I can't get myself to a gym, but I can certainly, like you said, open up my phone and take 20 minutes, yeah. 30 minutes to do we something. We want to get to the gym. It's yeah. like, we say we're going to do it. We say we're going to start something tomorrow. We say we want to make that change, but it's hard to carve out that time. And, you know, I, I, I really feel like um, anything and any day that you start and anything that you're willing to commit to yourself is probably the most valuable investment. And I used to sort of, laugh at these short burns, you know, these eight minute workouts and these, you know, 10 minute changes. And I used to think, really, is that really going to work? But I have all kinds of different programs on my app that are 
eight minutes, some of them are six minutes, some of them are 30, some of them are longer. But you can pick and choose you know, specific body parts and figure out what works for your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people, like, I can't describe to you how to step into your, you know, your best self and how much time you're going to carve out of your of your day to day, but I can give you all of the possibilities within one app, and then you can start to pick and choose what you want to work on and how you feel. And it's fun. Like it's, you know, I'm on location, I'm on the beach, I'm outside, I'm in my backyard, I'm taking people to Malibu up the coast, and also celebrating different trainers from, you know, New York to LA. So it's not just about me. I'm bringing in friends. We were just talking about that. It's always better when you grab a bestie or you do it together. It kind of keeps you accountable, doesn't it? <laughs> it keeps you honest working I, out with friends. I have one friend. Her name's actually Brooke, so that's very serendipitous. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> and she's so good at signing up for classes. And she's like, you should come, you should come. And I don't think I would go without her, but because she's yeah. so excited, I'm like, yeah, I can take 45 minutes to go do this after work. Well, it's about so much more for me than just the body, too. I mean, it's about the mind. It's about our confidence. It's about how we feel. It's about having more energy. I can't tell you enough. You know, we all know it. People say, I don't have the energy. I'm too tired. I'm working too hard. I got the kids, da, 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 da you're going to have more energy and you're going to feel better. And it's just that simple. And I tell people that, you know, as corny as it sounds, the more you work out, the better you feel, the better you feel, the more you work out. But as soon as we can make ourselves a priority, you know, and that's the first thing that goes when you become a mommy, when you become a businesswoman, whether you're a girl boss, mom, whatever it is, we, we, we allow ourselves to get last on the totem pole. So I don't believe in that anymore. And I think we need it for our energy. We need it for our own balance in our life. We need it for our confidence. It's just a re total reset, total shift. You say anymore. So is fitness something that you used to kind of put on the back burner and now you're realizing? Or has it always been something just... Well, involved? fitness was always part of my life. And because of my industry and because, you know, I started as a model and then, you know, what I do for a living, it's always been a priority. But I put all the other stuff on the back burner. So now as a woman in my 40s, now I'm like, no, 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 I really matter. <laughs> like, I'm allowed to be equally as important. You know, if not putting myself first, which actually sounds a little bit strange, it's hard to wrap our head around. Um, but we, we just were better people, mothers, partners, wives, business people, I think, when we are our best selves, you know? Definitely. And, you know, we've, we're into summer now. Yeah. Is it too late <laughs> no. to slim down for the summer, Brooke? <laughs> Is it's, it? It's never too late. Okay. It's never too late. Um, you know, everybody's trying to cram it in. Everybody's trying to find out how do I lose those, those five pounds and what's going to help me get into my bikini and get summer ready quick. I like to develop a whole sustainable lifestyle all year long. But the reason why I launched the 28 Day Summer Slim Down is because people get scared of like two months, three months, a whole commitment, right? I mean, I get that. I get that as a woman. I get all of the challenges and all of the excuses. But I think if you commit to starting and you can start small and in the program, which it's free, by the way, people are like, why are you giving all this away for free? Like, no gimmicks. It's 100% free. It's 89 pages. My friends are like, what are you doing? I'm kind of sharing something that I think is really important and really life-changing. And I show people how to do some spring cleaning and edit your life, which means your house, your pantry, your kitchen, your closet, maybe some friends <laughs> if you need to do that. But just setting yourself up for success, how to start to change your inner dialogue. There's daily mantras, there's daily checklists, there's grocery lists. I brought in a very good friend who's a New York Times bestselling nutrition expert, Jorge Cruz. We've got recipes, all of his philosophies. Um, daily meal plans, and then, of course, the workouts are on the app. But it's basically a program to help you get your mind in the right place. And then I know the body will follow. And I just think we need it. We need it right now. And it's not just for women. We all need to take care of ourselves, our health. It's like we don't have our health. We wait until there's a problem or we wait until there's an issue. So I'm all about just self-care for sure. And so in the 28-day plan, what does like a standard day look like? Well, I have it broken down. So you'll get up in the morning and you'll have a little check sheet that says, did I love myself enough? Did I take care of myself? Did I get my Zs? Did I sleep? Did I put healthy things and conscious choices into my body? So you're a little accountable for what you eat because you write it down. And the daily burns are broken down. So one day, for example, might be a booty burn. So I have all these programs to tone and lift and sculpt and they really work and they hit all the trouble areas. And it's not going to take 45 minutes of your day. So some of them are short, short little effective burns. So maybe you're doing booty and abs and maybe the next day you're doing arms and legs. There's actually two rest days in the week. 
So if you see where I'm going, it's totally doable. There's seven days, two of them are stretch and recovery because we have to listen to our body, right? And we have to start slow. So it's for all ages and levels. Some days are total body cardio parties. It's fun, it's not boring, we're outside. So I'm trying to change the way people feel and think about fitness. Yeah, I've never heard it called a cardio, cardio party, party. <laughs> but I'm willing to RSVP if Good. it's going to give me the results that I want. You got to come to the party. I mean, yes, we're sweating and we're burning and we're challenging and it's hard. But I always say if you're not sweating, you're not working out hard enough. And if you're not willing to get uncomfortable, you're not willing to push yourself a little bit further, then change doesn't happen. So that's the whole philosophy philosophy behind the booty burn concept. It's like we work past the burn and that's where we change. And it doesn't take long. It really doesn't and the results are amazing. And so we're building and carving and sculpting and lifting and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, there's so many different types of workouts now. There's boxing, there's yoga, there's Pilates. So what have you found to me maybe uh, work the best for your body type or to give you the, the kind of results that you were looking for? Well, I totally believe in cross training. So even if you love the Brooke Burke body program, go try other things because I think we learn so much from other people. So, you know, I do a little bit of cycling. I'll, I do hot yoga. And then, you know, of course I teach my class. So I have no excuses. <laughs> I stay really busy doing it. And then I do the daily burns. But I think it's that point of fatigue where you really push past that burn where your muscles start to respond and change. And there's a lot of compound moves, which means we get to spend spend less time working out. So for example, some of the total body moves, we're working legs and arms and using our core to stabilize. So you're hitting all these multiple body parts and you get to only do it for five minutes-ish, you know, and you're getting the results. So I like dynamic moves. I like to be on a musical journey. Um, I like a little bit of rhythm because I, for me, it's, it, it has to be fun or you're not gonna stick with it. You know, so it's kind of a union of a lot of things, sculpting, a little bit of dance, a little bit of movement. It's good. Does the Brook Brook Body app have a Spotify playlist? Because if not, I feel like that might I be a know. good... I desperately want a playlist. The technology is not there yet. Okay. I do it with VHX and, and um, Vimeo. But, and I always say to people, when you're tired of hearing my voice, just turn me down. <laughs> turn the volume down and turn your playlist up because I'm totally driven by music. But one of the things that I'm, I'm really, really enjoying right now is this series called Woman to Woman that's on the app. So it's not just about the workout. There's a lot of inspiration. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling stories that I really believe need to be told for that person that maybe doesn't know how or maybe they don't know how to stick in it or maybe they don't, they don't have the confidence and maybe there's some fear attached to fitness. So I'm interviewing a lot of different people and um, telling those stories and putting those interviews up there for those days when you, know, you just need a little bit of inspiration, maybe some nutritional guidance and maybe you just want a feel-good story that's going to inspire you to you know, dig a little deeper and do what you need to do. Who's one woman that you have interviewed that really kind of stuck out to you? Um, Emily Vavra, I just interviewed her, raised by a single mom, built a, built a multi-million dollar business, found a mentor, and she says all the time, it's about affirmations, it's about changing your inner dialogue, it's about surrounding you with people that lift you up, that build you up and encourage you, so little things like that. Jorge Cruz and I have broken down how to eat, what not to eat, what to do, the concept of intermittent fasting, Everybody's talking about it on the West Coast where I live. I don't know what's going on here in New York. We're putting butter in our coffee and coconut oil and all kinds of crazy things. Um, you know, just, just different people that have inspired me that, you know, have words of wisdom that will encourage someone. That's what feels good for me. There's a big community factor, and I'm in the forum every day, and I love it. And, you know, a lot of people aren't confident enough to share their progress or to share their photos and images of where they started. They know where they're going, but when they do and when they own it, I think it's so inspiring to other people and other women, especially people who think, you know, this is, it's not a dance app or it's not an app just for models and it's not an app for just like-minded people like me. It's really a program for anyone, men and women, partners, spouses, kids, there's some family fitness on there. You know, there's a little bit of everything. You mentioned family fitness. Do you work out with your kids? I do. I do. Well, I usually drag them to my class, so they've been watching me work out most of their life. But I just did a college program with my daughter, so we did a college burn, which is so great for these kids that are off to college. My daughter just graduated, which is crazy. She graduated this week. She's 18. Congrats. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, how did I grow up that fast? What about her? Um, but, you know, they get to college, and, you know, 
finance, economy. Not everybody can afford a gym membership and they're running out of time and they're stressed out with school. So I do feel like fitness is also a bit of escape and it's a way to reset yourself and it's a way to kind of balance, you know, the stress in life. So we did a really great program for the college girls and um, I did another burn at home with my daughter who's 11 and she actually VO'd it, which was super cute. So she was training me. She totally kicked my butt. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. And she was making fun of me. So it's just fun to be at home, especially for these working, you know, stay-at-home moms or working moms who come home and they're tired and they have family time. Just moving, spending that time with your family is really good. I would imagine, too, incorporating your children into your workout makes it a family event, which, yeah. you know, let's all go for a walk. Let's all go to the park. Like, that is creates an opportunity for you to get that workout yeah. in with your kids. Yeah, and I think it's important. I mean, we lead by example in mm -hmm. family fitness. And, you know, it might not be something that physical, like you said. It's time outdoors or time just enjoying something and moving and teaching them how to eat and how to find their energy. And, you know, that, that time where you're not distracted and you're not on your, you know, you're not on the phone and you're not, you know, that's good. <laughs> the food component is obviously going to be yeah. really important in any fitness program. Um, so what is the biggest thing you've learned about nutrition on your own fitness journey? Well, I do think 90, 95% of health and wellness is really what we put into our bodies. We can work out all we want. And, um, the, you know, the nutritional component is, is, is one of the most important things. So I'm really big on intermittent fasting right now. And uh, it's really simple. I mean, I don't even like to use the word diet, and I don't skimp on flavor, and I eat. Like, I really, I like to cook. I really enjoy food. And nobody wants to do a quick fix that they can't sustain, and then they're going to break it, and then they're going to gain all the weight back. So um, I think it's about figuring out how to feed your body and what you enjoy. So I do, like, an eight-hour window. I eat for eight hours, and then I give my body a rest for 16 hours. It's so simple. Like, you, you can look up. There's lots of science behind it. It's great for burning belly fat. It gives you more energy. I eat a lot of fat, like butter. <laughs> and people are like, what? <laughs> I do. I put butter in my coffee and coconut oil. And a lot of people are doing it now. And I know it sounds crazy. I'm looking at the faces. I know. But think of it as like a European, like a, like a, like a latte. So I don't eat breakfast. I do my coffee with my butter, my coconut oil. I have energy. I'm full. Everybody's looking around like, oh, that's so gross. It's called intermittent fasting or the bulletproof coffee. Everybody's doing yeah, it on I've the West of, Coast. Yeah. And it works. And so it's good fats. It's oils and avocados. And it's getting rid of just the crap that we don't need, the saturated stuff and packaged foods and the junk and the flour and the sugar. But I eat well. I eat meat. I eat fish. I drink wine. I drink a little tequila from time to time. <laughs> I cook. Tequila is my... You know what I mean? Choice, and yeah. tequila is not bad, That's by the what, way. A little Especially shelter Especially organic water. tequila, mm -hmm. right? High energy. Put a little lime in it. You know? It's a little all good. orange wedge on ice. <laughs> so uh, before we go to audience questions, obviously I know, you know fitness and health are important to you for many reasons, one being your health... Uh, you are a survivor of thyroid cancer, yeah. and I'm sure that, you know, feeling good plays into your body reacting to certain illnesses. So what have you learned about that component of kind of dealing with, like, a chronic illness or anything and how food can impact that? Well, I have some autoimmune challenges. So I had Hashimoto's for a decade before I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and I'm cancer-free right now, so whew, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. But what I really learned was sometimes, you know, we're not invincible. And that's why health for me and taking care of myself, and it's not just the fitness, it's self-care, is so important mentally as much as it is physically. But we have to be great, great patients. We have to assemble a team of supportive people around us. And I do think that the way that we process stress um, you know, our body really reaps those, you know, reaps that pain. So um, you got to have a balance. You have to have an outlet. You have to sometimes just slow down and listen to your body. I just did an incredible interview with Jessie Golden, who's a yoga instructor, and we did a workout together, and she also struggles with some autoimmune, and she just said, sometimes we don't stop moving until we have to physically stop, or there's an issue, or there's a health challenge, or a health scare. So it's really important to just listen to your body and understand, you know, how to give ourselves what we need. And for me, my self-care when I'm hurting, whether it's emotional or life, stress, work, I kind of tap a little deeper into that and um, I go and I get that sweat or I go do that yoga class or I'll go and, you know, you know, do some of the hippy dippy things that we do in LA, like these breath work classes and, you know, sound baths. But even something that I can do at home just to take care of myself, the benefits of that are, are huge. 
I think that's great advice and something I wish somebody would have told me at 21. Yeah. You yeah, know, just real. to slow down and take care. So I think that's something that can really help me. Because we just go, life. go, 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 go. And we're all grinding and we're climbing the mountain and we're entrepreneurs and we're like, you know, bosses and we're like just trying to change the world or our own world. And sometimes we don't stop until we crash. So I just think there's little moments along the way that will actually energize you and empower you and help you get there in a much more effective, productive way. You Absolutely. Know? I think it's a good time to go to some audience questions. Anybody? Hi. Hi. I um, saw you making a, a yucky face when I mentioned the butter <laughs> in my coffee. <laughs> I, I, I will try that later, and I'll, I'll probably let you know how that goes. Um, but my question is, since you started this app, um, I guess, like, what difficulties or what obstacles did you face, and how did you handle the criticism from, like, fans or from just mm -hmm. people who use the app? How did you, like, navigate through that and pioneer? Well, it's a great question, um, and I was prepared for a lot. And, you know, fortunately, I did this app with Vimeo and VHX, so honestly, they had all the tech side handled, which is crazy when you're launching any kind of a new business, and I was really prepared for that. Um, on the critical side, you know, People have to find what, what they respond to. And I actually offer a free trial. So it's free for seven days, and that's how confident I am about it. But it's also for me to say, try it. It also allows me to give everybody the gift and the possibility of taking care of themselves. So if they don't like it, you're out. And you know, and you can cancel at any time. So I'm pretty blessed that I'm flying below the radar <laughs> of, of that. And also, you know, it's real. And there's such a variety on there that you know, normally for someone, it's either a price point. It's less than a quarter a day. At seven ninety nine, which people thought I should, you know, market it much higher. I would rather have thousands of people and have the masses doing it with me, and and to have fitness affordable for me. That's something that I'm really passionate about. So um, so far so good, and I'm in the community every single day, and it's actually amazing. And not just the interaction between myself and the community, but the interaction between people together on that day when you're down or you just can't do it or you're struggling or you're not feeling good. There's somebody else in there communicating. So it's like everybody's uplifting each other, and I love that. So that's really important. You know, that's the power that we have right now in social media. Um, and I don't pay attention to a lot of the other negative stuff. Hate know. is going to hate. <laughs> <laughs> One more question? Uh, hi. Hi. How are um, you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, so you mentioned having a sort of a sustainable maybe workout or routine. Uh, have there been times where your routine was disrupted or you weren't able to do the workouts or uh, when you scheduled or you wanted to and was it hard to get back into it? Yeah, I mean, I've been pregnant my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I have four children. Um, I actually... God, I did my best to work out, you know, during those pregnancies because it just made me feel good. But absolutely, there's down days. There's just one thing that I know for sure as a woman, and part of the reason why I've built this community is because this, this type of messaging is really important to me for men and women. On those down days when you don't have it in you and you think you don't have energy or it's dark or you're down or you're depressed or you're just in a funk, those are those days when you got to just reach out to someone, make a commitment, do it with them, or do it on your own and get to that class or go do some yoga or change your body. Because I feel like fitness is a total reset. And even when, you know, as women, like that's a good part of the month, when we're feeling a little bit low and funky and not energized or the hormones are all out, all out of whack, that's when I push myself a little harder to get it done. And I promise you, I could feel really bad walking into a class and I feel really good walking out of it and that I, that I just know for certain and the science is behind that the endorphins the hormones the shift you know so it's that's I just make I just make myself do it I invest in myself enough and I believe in that and we kind of joke around and we call it sweat equity that's like the best investment that we can give ourselves is to do something for ourselves and then you start to change that inner dialogue a little voice that's always messing with you and telling you not to go or you'll do it later. I get my workouts done in the morning. I knock it out. I'm good. <laughs> and I feel good about myself. I feel like I took care of myself, you know? That's yeah. the thing. You never regret working out. Never. Nobody I've never walks finished. out of the bus and goes, gosh, yeah. I wish I didn't do that. Exactly. Like <laughs> Maybe the next day when you're really hurting, you know? I just took a class. <laughs> I was sore for three days. But even then, I was like, I'm glad I went, and this is all going to turn into muscle, you, and I'm going to have Brooke it. Burke's body by the end of sore. this week. <laughs> well, Brooke, it was so great chatting with you. If you guys want to learn more, check out the Brooke Burke Thank body you. app and give it up for Brooke Burke. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.